who is the woman, be not behind the man, but next to the man. Same side. Oh no. And like, you were one of those feminists? Yes, yes. <laughs> and having the same coffee? How did you go from bikini to burkini? I don't need to be against acts of kindness to be feminist. Enough of my voice and coffee with cream, you know. From <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely the the number one fan, but you know. Uh, born and raised in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro specifically, Correct. right? Uh, we I was raised Catholic. My grandmother was Catholic, and um, but you know in Brazil everyone is born Catholic. I was uh, taught how to pray and believe in God and have fear of God. Uh, funny stories that um, say. My family, you know, we are all women, and they are very clean women. So every time uh, was uh, a storm, my my mom would tell me I would be afraid of the thunderstorm. My mom would tell me it was God washing the house and moving the furniture. So we had like this practical vision of God in our house. And it's connected to cleaning and organizing. It's connected to cleaning and organizing. Yes. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, my wife loves to clean and organize. So. That's fascinating that that's part of your childhood theology right there. Yes. <laughs> so how did you go from that to eventually leaving Brazil to come to the United States and then studying Islam before that uh, and then eventually embracing Islam in the United States? I mean, Brazil's usually considered a culture that is very different from most Muslim cultures. For sure. So how did you go from bikini to burkini? Well, I gotta say we do have soccer in common. I think most of the Middle East countries true. love, love soccer, soccer too, just yeah. like Brazilians. So back in 2002, uh, there was the soap opera in Brazil, very popular, called El Clonin. Probably a lot of uh, people heard about. And there was a story about this Moroccan lady who was leaving Rio and deal with all the cultural differences. And uh, she was sent to Morocco to get married. And she had a, a very uh, wise uncle who was always coming with good messages about Islam, a, a little uh, details about the history of Islam, who was Prophet Muhammad, how we should behave in a family. And it was a, uh, the character was a very interesting character. So that was the first time I heard about Islam. That was also uh, the same year of the 9-11 uh, terrorist attack. And so... The whole world was talking bad things about Islam and Muslims yeah. and this people is horrible. And at the same time, we were watching this show every day at 8 p.m. All the families would gathering to learn about this religion, who actually, at least in television, seems to be pretty cool and similar to our values and um, seems to be good people. Yeah. So that was my first impression of Islam. And when I, I finished my college, I went to Canada and I met some more Muslims. And I had a, a very um, good first impression of them. Uh, the girls didn't seem to be oppressed and sad and shy or anything. They were like happy hijabi girls, happy to share, happy to teach, to show us around the city. The guys were very kind and gentlemen. They didn't seem to be the sexist, horrible Muslim men mm. that we heard who doesn't let the woman drive or do this or that. <laughs> and so it was a very uh, interesting, good impression. And then after that, in, in when I came to the United States in 2011, um, I again meet more Muslims and I start to be more curious about the, about Islam, about what Islam teaches, what are mm. the pillars of Islam, and how uh, the, the historical side of it, who was Prophet Muhammad and everything. And now how my journey actually started, like learning a bit here, a bit there. And there was a period of my life where I was very lost, feeling very disconnected with God. I was alone here, far from my family, far from my friends, everything I knew. Uh, I, feel, I felt like I didn't have any meaning. And it was right at the same time of Ramadan. So I took this time of Ramadan. I tried to fast. I did all wrong. <laughs> but I tried to fast on my own. I was uh, um, pretty much most of the time in my in my room, just reading and learning and watching videos. And I found so uh, beautiful to see people gathering uh, for iftar and Ramadan mm. and they have that like connection. I also heard the Adhan for the first time. And that somehow touched me in a way that I never felt before. It's literally uh, brought tears to my eyes out of the blue. Like I was just hearing this sound, this music, 
and I just start crying and uh, thinking just how beautiful th that calling was. Hmm. And uh, as I learned more about slum and what teaches, I just felt was very aligned with my life views at that moment and what I want for me. And I, I converted to slum. Yeah, uh, after this, uh, specifically in Ramadan, when I was like a little down in the learning, I was like praying for a, a direction in my life. And alhamdulillah, two months later, I met you. SubhanAllah. <laughs> I was uh, raised by only women. My parents were divorced. I was raised by my grandmother, my mom, and my aunt. And I was I was taught that women needs to be strong. We don't need men for anything. One thing that we are very proud about it is that my mom would change uh, lamps and carry heavy stuff and do everything on her own because she didn't need any men in her life. And I had this image that you know I can have it all on my own. I'm 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 all I need. And I don't need men for anything. I never really had a. Um, I never really saw the value of a man, in in a woman's life or in a family setting, because I had everything with my mom, my grandma, and my aunt. Mm. So of course that made me a, a a person with, you know, strong opinion and uh, um, very feminist, a, a little bit extreme feminist. I I gotta say that uh, I would feel offended if you opened the car the, the door for me. Oh no! And, like you this. were one of those feminists. <laughs> yes, yes. I would. But you would still let the men pay for your dinner. No. Oh really? No, I share. Oh. I ate my part. I oh, pay my part. Okay. So, so you went Dutch. So you at least you were fair and consistent. I was consistent. Okay. Yes. No. Pay half and a half. Because there's some sisters that they don't want any of that, but then they still expect you to. You know, they pick and choose where they want their chivalry. No, I I, I would feel offended. Why you think I can't open the door myself, or you think I don't have money to pay? That was always my my answer, mm -hmm. and and it's silly. Alhamdulillah. Why is it silly though? It's silly because I I still feel as um, I want to be treated well, and to be treated well. If it means you're gonna open the door for me, I want that. And if you want to take me further than you're gonna pay for, I want that. In the same way, I can one day take you out for dinner too. It's like, honey, today is on me. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't need to be against. I don't need to be against acts of kindness to be feminist. I see. I don't need to be against acts of kindness to be feminist. A Paula Prado original. I like that. That was really my attitude. And alhamdulillah, I, I grow up and I mature, mature uh, to the point where I can see that men and women are different. And they both are needed in, in a family setting, in society and everything. And they have different roles. I don't consider I consider myself a feminist, but more aligned with the the goals the feminist movement has in the past of equal opportunity and uh, having rights than like being a type of feminist who's gonna go on the street and, and go in a march naked to prove a point. Mm. So I don't believe that this is the right way for you to show uh, power and your feminism. Mm -hmm. You feel like some of these activities to prove a point are going overboard, and sometimes I've heard you say it's like almost like takes away from the core spirit of feminism. Can you tell us more about why you feel that way about some of the modern themes or trends in feminism that you've observed? Yeah, I feel like women has been oppressed by the society in general, the culture in general. We didn't have a equal opportunity. We were mistreated. We had to be at home taking care of the kids and couldn't go out. We are financially controlled by men because we couldn't work, all those things. So we did suffer. I'm not going to deny we have a, a, a history of suffering and oppression. Uh, and then now, because we are in a place of a bit, a little bit of more power, we are overdoing. Like some women, they are just they just want to take the place of men. They want to be like a man. They want to be more than a man. And the way I see is that we are all humans. So there's no more or less of a human on me or on you. We just have a different roles in society and in the family. Different talents, different Different talents, yeah. skills, yes. But different, we need each other. But so. Yes, we are complementary. So I don't, I don't like those very small percentage of feminists that are, I know, getting out of the way to hate men, to talk against men, to, you know, uh, going extremely aggressive to the, the male figure when he's as important as us in, in, a, in a society. We need a man to function. 
We need a man to have babies and keep uh, the humanity going. Keep creating more future women. You know? You're yes. still going to need us. We need the man, like, for everything. If you don't like the man to change your bulb in your house, it's yeah, hell no problem. But, you know, men is an important part of society and it doesn't need to... I don't need to diminish men to make myself feel better. Right. Uh, what I need and I want, it's equal opportunity. It's having the same opportunity to talk in a meeting. It's the, having the same amount of promotions my colleague would have. I want to be seen by the human I am, not by my gen- gender. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like that point that you're saying that sometimes there are people in this feminist movement who just you know, want it all or want to replace men completely. And I also kind of feel like maybe historically, part of the reason why some populations of men or some places had more rigidity around women is because of perhaps a sense of insecurity about the power that women have. I mean, think about it. When you're an arcane man, right? And women are these portals for the souls to come through. She's like almost like a a magician yeah it's almost like a wizard or just like an amazing like almost like a good witch or something you know it's like i couldn't imagine what somebody ten thousand years ago thought about this creature that is so beautiful i want to be with her and when i am with her and share this gorgeous you know connection and bonding uh humans come out of her and she feeds them from her own body (laughs) i mean that's a lot of power and i'm sure there were a lot of men who are very insecure about that they were like Wow, like she possesses the power of life. She's the portals of life. Yeah, also, of course, man is biologically stronger and uh, he can control women in, in many ways uh, because we have this mag- magic thing coming for us with the childbirth and we have to take care of the kid. As, um, so he has to go out and provide. So I only think like men and women, they are complementary to each other. Of course. I don't think we are looking, we as women are looking for equality in a sense we want to be men equal to men i think we are looking for well some women are but some women aren't right we we i know me my friends and the people right. i know okay. that are okay. so considered in your circle you're, in my yeah. circle yeah. yeah the people i know that are that consider themselves feminists but with uh, uh, balanced ideas uh we don't want to be equal men we want to be we just want to have the same opportunity as men right and that that's the trick right there i don't want to grow a mustache or be super strong and i don't want to compete with men in any way in athletics or something i just want to have the same opportunity i want to be in a company and be heard and i want to have the opportunity to drive if you can drive and it's, in my opinion, it's bringing a bad, a negative image to, to feminism, which is a very important movement and right. necessary up to now. Right. It's like, don't take away from the core of the real cause, um, because there are people on the fringe that act and think a bit insanely, right? Yes, and though, honestly, uh, we do need a special protection as a woman. Right. It doesn't make me weaker. But why is it why is it a problem to accept that in some ways you are weaker than men? And men are weaker than women in some ways. Like I would I the way that's how I see it because if we are fundamentally creatures of need and bonding, this is how Allah designed us. We're social creatures. Naturally, there has to be things we're going to actually need from each other, and the other will be stronger. We complement each right? other. So it's fascinating because Allah says there's a male and a female. We created the two. Your pursuits can be different, but d- despite your differences and your commonality, keep excellence and beauty and character in the way you do things. So it's like Allah is telling us there's going to be differences, and in other times we recognize there are certain things that are more appropriate or more fit or more natural for, to, for men and, and for, for women. So, you know, I don't know why we're all so freaked out by the word weakness. Like, I think men are weak when it comes to certain things. For example, we have sometimes weaker uh, abilities around, let's say, our modesty or our impulsivity, right? Men tend to have those issues more than women. Right. Yes. Women aren't as impulsive as men are, generally speaking. Right. And that means we do more dangerous things, more stupid things and and so on. So, I mean, we do we we have weaknesses. I'm just saying, why? Why is that a problem? Because we are weak by nature. Humans are weak. I mean, you're not that powerful. Yes. We have to start treating each other as human uh, uh, brothers and sisters, human. So we we have different weakness, different strength. 
um, you are of course stronger than me when it comes to your body and your physical strength right so if I have to why I'm gonna carry you have a box if you are there for me right. that doesn't make me you know less of a woman for that just look to the fact that our brains are wired differently we are biologically different so I, I don't want to be treated the same way than you and Anyhow, and I accept the fact that I'm vulnerable. Just look to the viol uh, domestic violent violence stats, right? Uh, it's much more common men um, well, being violent, well, women, yeah. being aggressive uh, t towards women than the opposite. Of course, because you are stronger, because you can, you know, really take the power over me. Uh, I accept the fact that I'm vulnerable and I need a special protection and law for that. So right. uh, because you're biological stronger than me and you tend to be more aggressive because you are a male, uh, I do have domestic violence law and I want that. Of course. It doesn't make me feel weak. It doesn't make me feel... Yeah, it's about being... Being accepted that there are things that I'm vulnerable yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, that's the point of government and, in my opinion, religion. It's to protect people from harm. Yeah. Fundamentally. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu said, one of the last things he said before he died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his goodbye sermon was... Those, those that are best of you are those who are best to your wives, which again was revolutionary for that time. And so when the Prophet says something like this, that means as Muslim men, we need to always be in pursuit of what is best for our wives, our daughters, the women in our society. Because any guy out there who still, you know, doesn't really see the importance of this is, I mean, there are so many brilliant women that if we're not tapping into that potential, our whole society, our culture, our families are not benefiting. I mean, when both of your parents are, you know, able to contribute in a lot of ways, and this doesn't mean every woman has to go to get a PhD and work necessarily, but the point here is make sure the lights are on. For you know, everybody? you can still, yeah, exactly. Let The access has to be there. The promotion has to be there. And then people can do what they want. And I also don't think that women should be maligned at all for being moms or choosing to do that because a mother is the most important career. It's the most vital career. I mean, that's the future of human beings. I mean, what's more important than that than developing new computers and new bank systems and new this and new detergents? It's the human beings that are going to consume all that other junk, right? And that's what moms are doing. That's the problem. Because of the oppression over the years, we are overdoing. This is the, this is the point here. So there is some social spite going on. Yes, yeah, so we don't, I don't I don't think we should try to substitute men. We need their help financially or not. I need your help for many things that doesn't need to be financial. I need your company. I need, you know, your sensitive side to pull me in situations here and there. It's not about just about finances. Right. I think men and women are complementary and we have to stop to fight against each other and work together yeah. because we need each other. People do like very gross stuff to prove points. I don't need to do that to prove that feminism is important. Feminism is there. It's an important movement. It's necessary. It's there to fight for our rights because up to now we are not respected uh, as men is. Mm. For example, I uh, when I was working in Brazil as a lawyer, uh, there was time in court where the judge was a man, the other part, the other lawyer was a man, and me and my client are there. So the man, he even the, the other lawyer, he could like he put his shoulder up and impose himself to talk louder than me and and. In, in a working setting, like, yeah. it was disrespectful. Because some men think they have this right. They they think... They can subdue you somehow. They, yeah, they, and that's what has to change. Mm. And I'm, I still want to wear dresses. I still want you to open the door for me and bring me chocolate or flowers. But uh, I want to be respected in my work settings and in society. I want to be able to go outside and don't have, like, a man saying, hey, you hot, or this or that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a human, after all. Yeah. You don't want to... A lot of men do this to like strangers on the street and then they have daughters and sisters at home and they don't think about them. Right. All right. So if you're the Brazilian president today, who is like you're Donald Trump, right? Right now. Yeah. That's what the Brazilians call him. Um, you know, if he says to have a man and a woman with the same credentials, the same position, I would go with a man, not a woman. Now. Okay, so at, at first it sounds like that's being sexist, but it's like, well, what if I just like the guy more than the woman, right? So what? what why that's, is that a problem? I can choose problem. who I want to hire. No, he cho he would choose the man because the woman get pregnant. So and that's what he said specifically. That's what he said specifically. Okay. So the woman so he saw that as a flaw, or yeah, he saw that as a weakness, as a flaw. 
And uh, at the end of the day was a woman who brought him to life. And uh, it's necessary to keep going. The six months we take off to take care of your children, it's essentially for us to, for the uh, for the families to keep growing, for kids to be born and everything. So nobody else can be a mother for you. That's sure. the point. Mother is just one for that kid is just that woman. Okay. But a lot of people can do your work. So it's not a big deal if the company has to adjust and get a, another person and uh, a to do the work of this woman who is off of work. And actually in America, it's just 45 days. It's not six months. In Brazil, it's six months. Right. And it's so important. So you need to give value to the importance of a woman to be at home with their kids and stuff. And that's not supposed to destroy her career and stop her to going back to work and be mistreated at work. I see. It's not supposed to be like this. That's the mentality we have to change. Naturally, you're saying because a woman is a woman and she will, 80% of women will have a child, this should not, we shouldn't automatically just see this as a threat to our a business or this, because in the end of the day, the very society that you're serving as a president or as a business owner or as a citizen is made up of the people who live in it. And the mothers who have opportunities without added stress, anxiety, or ridicule to raise their children and bond with them and connect them, they're going to make much better human beings that's going to be consuming the products that you make and sell Correct. and the computers In and the cars. Term work. So you're saying, yeah, have this more, we are a big fam human family perspective. And if we're going to be a human family, naturally we have to honor and uh, make room for, you know, working mothers and mothers who are going to have kids, right? And she's not going to probably she's not going to perform well at work or at home because of this anxiety. That's the mentality I would like to be different. That's what feminism should be fighting for. Not like replacement, but fighting for a culture, a, a collective thinking yeah. where they would respect the time the woman needs to go away. Don't make this a big deal and don't stop her to come back when she needs it. Right. Because so essentially you're saying it should we should be Islamic because Islam emphasizes the, the importance of family as the building blocks the building cells of society which i know is one of the things that made you attracted to islam is it really emphasized Families. family and so if we did honor family and collective more especially in the united states then we would honor that idea that just because you're having a kid doesn't mean your value as a professional should be diminished or you should be as a woman under all this pressure to choose between your child and your career right that's basically what you're saying. Yes, but uh, uh, for some uh, for some women, for some mothers, they might have like a, a support, uh, a nanny that they really like, a trust, or a family member, a grandmother who could you know help it out. Like in Brazil, that's pretty common. You know, first of all, you need two incomes, and second, uh, uh, you know, families around, they are always over there to to help, and that does I don't think it hurt the kid as much or. Hurt is not a good word. Harm? Harm, no. I don't think that will make the kid suffer as much because it's still a familiar face, then we drop it off in a daycare. And then the mom would feel way more confident too because, you know, the kid's with her family or her husband's family or something like this. I think that's what uh, uh, we have to keep fighting for, to be treated as uh, to be treated as a human with a have our qualifications taken in consideration rather than the things we not going to be able to, to give in two or six months because we're going to be home with our kid. Mm -hmm. so. That's a great point, Paula. And also, I think it's important to remember that men and women both have weaknesses respectfully in their own ways, right? Like that's why we actually need each other because I believe the human being is a creature in need by design, a creature of bonding. We are social mammals. We are attachable, right? We attach to each other. This is one of the meanings of insan in Arabic, for example. Of course, we need each other, and there's certain times or ways that we are going to feel weak, and the other is there to fill that void or protect, right? So, for example, men could be weaker when it comes to, let's say, impulse control or modesty or, you know, these types of things. So, women help them cultivate these things emotional and social intelligence right mm -hmm. that's another way that often women can help civilize man you know tame the beast sometimes as well right and men also have ways that they can help women shine and optimize more uh maximize their reality as well so this is a, of course i mean we're on the same page about we are complementary 
um, we should work together and not in opposition or in competition, um, unless, you know, the context allows, like a game or something. But otherwise, you know, the, uh, the tension I feel like that exists sometimes and the gender wars, I mean, all these things that we see is essentially breaking down the cohesiveness and solidarity of the family. What do you think? Correct. Yes. Um, this this uh, thing that I I can't you have I can't be feminine at home or I can't be a caretaker at home because that would make me less of a feminist and you know I'm just being submissive or something. This is ridiculous. Actually, I I I supposed to have the right to be whatever I want, even if I want to be submissive. That's my problem. It's inside my house. I do whatever I want. And, and I see this the, the movement going like crazy on women who choose to be at home, take care of the kids and the family, or women who actually, you know, prepare dinner for their husbands. That's a, a, a big problem outside our, our homes and inside our homes. Outside, we have to deal with the work problem and the lack of opportunity and blah, blah, blah. In a house, we have the pressure, like, should we take care of our husbands or are we going to show him weakness if we make a plate of food for him or fold his clothes in a certain way and blah, blah, blah. This is so silly. Things are supposed to be uh, natural. And you, yeah, like, are you weak if I go fill the tank of the of your car for you? Yes, you I, take the trash out. Oh, come know, on. Or I take the trash out, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make me a, a, weak, a weak woman or something. It's just something that's better for you to do it. The, right. the, the being is heavy, whatever. Right. I mean, love in a, a lot of ways is just acceptance and common sense, right? Because, of course... I could also cook every day if I wanted to, too. I can also do my own laundry, too. I did all those things for myself when I before I was married, right? I lived alone for a few years, and I had to do all those things for myself. And I recommend all men should do to that. Learn, and Not does. just live <laughs> with your parents and then just get married. Uh, because there's a lot of skills you have to learn autonomously. And alhamdulillah you have. You know, to, to be a man. So, But the thing is, is... It's like I don't I don't feel challenged by oh you're cooking I can cook better than you so step aside Paula and some <laughs> dishes I do cook better than you and True. some dishes you cook better than me but it's like it's the fact that you and I are and I think you know all couples who have that inshallah that peace is like we're not threatened or by each other yeah we don't feel like I if you do this I have to do this too or I have to do it better or you can't do this only I can't it's like relax you know circumstances sometimes make it where a dad has to stay home and watch the kids all day or may even for months I mean what if your wife gets sick god yeah. forbid you have to step up you and now know watch what the to kids do. right you have to know what to do so you know and there is this masculine and feminine energy embedded in both sides because if god forbid a person is sick or dies or whatever there has to be that energy that comes out to fulfill uh, that role too. So, I mean, I believe there is this fluidity and, and malleability, right, or adaptability as human beings. And sometimes we forget that just having that basic common sense and flow. Basic common sense, know, that's right, yeah. It's like makes that, your life so much easier. There just is relax. an external pressure, like a huge external pressure in, uh, for your family to go for a certain direction. Like, uh, so... Uh, uh, um, a woman can't be vulnerable and do things for her husband. A man has to be the provider or not. Right. If both of them work, they kind of like compete who has the better job right. and blah, blah. It's an extre extreme uh, pressure for uh, men and women to fight to not get along. That I feel like... I feel like the word is against us somehow. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> the word is against couples, against men and women trying to work together. It's no, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe there is this narrative, or in pop culture, television, it's like it always has to show like, you know, men and women are a certain way, and we always have these problems. And it's making like, fun of each other, yeah, they don't have like, fun together. That's not always the case. Like I mean, you have a like, you're pregnant, your life is over. You get married for the man, your life is over. Uh, television is shown every day. Anything we watch, you have something making fun of families, right? Making or fun. showing how fa family life basically it sucks. Yes, yeah. and it, I mean it's you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it does. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. but it's a, it's the very core of society, you know. Right. It's the heart of this world. It's a family. Uh, I I don't. I uh, when we're talking, we just dis we decide to make the show about feminism and everything. But it's all connected. Of course, how how the feminist ideology is connected to how we we live and perceive inside our house, and we treat our husbands or our sons or, you know. 
you listen on television some things like men are taking this and this from us and then we get home we're gonna take on our husband and took him bad it's, it's silly it's childish it's, yeah it's uh, and immature we have to understand that men and women are different we're gonna be we're gonna act different but we have equal importance to work we are complementary and the only thing women should be fighting for is equal opportunity and respect for example um, I, I mean it's, it's like to me it's like having three different kids or you know those of us who have kids your kids are not exactly the same They're not. even though they both come from both of you mm-hmm. right just like man and woman come from the same family and set of parents our kids are not going to be the same. Do we now tell them, oh, you don't have to get along. Everything has to be a competition. You can take everything personally because your personalities are different. No, we always tell them what? You're all brothers and sisters, right? You come from the same family. You have to learn to get along and complement and so on and so forth, even though you have differences. Why is it now that when it comes to male and female, we, are we, we get this pop culture energy of it's meant to be chaos almost it's meant to be we're never going to understand each other it's meant to be, you know but no if we understand each other as fundamentally human creatures in need to complement right we're here yes. and designed for one another which is one of the things that evolutionary biology still has no solid explanation for why did na- natural selection if that's what's in charge for us to get here developed and evolved us into two sexes there's no real explanation for that yeah how did that happen allah says we created everything in pairs we're obviously we're supposed to supposed, be working pairs. supposed to be here yeah exactly we're supposed to be here and working and and um helping each other not not fighting uh, i also don't want people to think that you know all the feminists are that crazy and alhamdulillah this is a small percentage they just get more attention in the media because they are doing extreme things or saying things that doesn't make sense um, but I hope, and I believe, at least in my circle, most of my friends and I, we understand uh, that we are different but complementary, and there's no need to be a fight. Right. And in the end of the day, empowerment should never mean only through subduing or oppressing another. And if men have done that to women, that has to be corrected. And if women do it to men, it has to be corrected. If a nation does it to another nation, it has to be corrected, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it has been done to women, I think, in the past. Uh, the, first of all, a man has an uh, aggressive nature, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that's sexist. That's sexist, I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, you do have... You guys do have a... Like, I have a more sensitive nature. Mm-hmm. Most of us. <laughs> Anyways, in general speaking, man is a little bit more aggressive. And women are a little bit more the caretaker and the sensitive side of it. So, in the past, uh, even in the cave times... A man has to go all day work and hunt and getting food and the woman's the one in the cave taking care of the kids. Later on, the man has the financial power over a woman. He was the one working and everything. The woman was at home taking care of the house, taking care of the kids. This financial power, I think, eventually become the aggressive. the became politicized the, politicizing as well. Politicizing yeah. the problem, yeah, because then we become very dependent. I don't see a problem in a woman being financially dependent on a man if that's work for the family. Yeah, because the man is dependent on a woman for other it, value. Oh, it may not be correct. money, but it's... It's like the value of recuperation, rejuvenation, war on nurturing, food, yeah, having healthy kids, a shelter to come home to. I mean, that's all stuff I'm completely dependent on you for. Yes, you know? correct. So, uh, but this idea of uh, the woman could start being oppressive was because in the past men has this financial uh, power over women. I also think, Paul, it has to do with we have given money too much power and value. Yeah. So think about it. The person who makes more money or is in charge of making money, naturally they're going to be seen as more powerful because we worship money so yeah. much of us, right? It's like money is the main reason why we go to school and want to be successful. Think about it. The reason why all these things are also centralizing around provider and money and career and doing, is because also money has become a new the god, god in a yeah. way, right? It's a new idol. Yeah, and has been like this for centuries, and uh, and men was often had this this power, the the money power, and that led led to aggressive and sometimes uh, controlling and sometimes domestic violence, and anyways, and things got messy along, along right. the way. People have always worshipped money and wealth, but I feel like today because individ- dogmatic individualism, with the cocktail ingredients of. Um, the dark side of capitalism, I'm not against capitalism, but the dark side of capitalism, and of course the obsession of consumerism, which is a result of that, you put those together and 
money becomes a much more powerful idol. Um, and the experience of family and bonding and masculine, feminine energy and children. And these moments for a lot of people are wondrous and divine, right? It's a constant reminder. But if family, like you're saying on TV, is always seen as a, just a big joke, or it's just a, always chaos and disaster and it's all stress and, you know, blah, life is just this dark, you know, you know, sad thing in the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, why get married? Why have kids? Yeah, it, it, it sucks the Let's life. just keep fighting for a better position or jobs and uh, it, hating exactly. each other. <laughs> it just makes it about that's the point of life, right? The pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of things. money and things and whatever my ego wants. Because as soon as you kill, you suck the life and beauty and glow of family then career is all that matters. Well, uh, the, uh, that's bringing me back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, once the, the mentality of uh, companies and corporate America or internationally change to the fact that families are as important, that women just leave the work to have kids because it's family, that's how we grow, that's how we develop as humans. When the mentality change, that's when we're going to be respected as women or as human beings. It would lead us to fight against gender against gender or, you know, families being apart and kids who doesn't look for their parents they are always busy with work and all connected <laughs> yeah it's like this very um so-called important eloquent pursuit to nowhere pursuit to nowhere good one <laughs> yep and meanwhile we are just focusing pop culture television and marches and fights and blah 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 yeah we put all the show on tv to you know fight for rights for this and for that and like well, let's observe what we are doing inside our houses how we are you know the bounding the connection we are having there so if we were to close off with let's say a couple of points of advice or tips or tools you'd like to offer you know our audience out there for let's say improving family life or human connection or you know relations between genders what would you what would you feel you'd love to share one thing that's for me it's major it's uh remember that we are humans before anything else mm -hmm. before what we carry inside our bodies we are human so we should be respected as humans the second, like, see that you are complementary to one another. People have to stop fighting with this competition who is doing more. That's for couples. Mm. Let's disconnect ourselves a little bit from pop culture and see through the message that's out there. What they are telling us, what those movements are telling us, you know, they really want us to uh, cultivate family and love and respect and affection. And I really don't think so. So let's look through... Look more deeply at this. Look deeply Challenge the core to the message that we see every day yeah. out there. Yes. As far as like being Muslim and religion, what I would like to say is that look for, seek for knowledge. We know that there is a patriotic society. A lot of Muslim accounts have problem with sexism and the lack of opportunity for women. But just know your religion. Learn your religion. That wasn't the case in the past. Khadija was a successful businesswoman, for example. What's the point of uh, let our girls to go to school, do PhD, do this and that, and also you don't teach her the basic skills of being a woman as well? Mm -hmm. You know, we women we can do everything. That's an advantage we we have. A, uh, not ever. We, it's not that we can do everything perfectly, but we are multitasking, right? So we are able to learn to be successful and everything, and still we can be feminine and caretaking and be kind to our husbands, to our kids, and you know, clean the house like nobody else would do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's at least what I do best. I think in a house. Definitely, you're definitely more <laughs> more than me in that department. In the domestic setting, like. I clean my house. I love to clean my house. I don't need to feel bad for that. I don't want to feel bad for that. I don't want this to make me feel like, uh, oh, I'm a submissive, poor wife of Kareem. Come on. No, I'm awesome in what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you help me be awesome, too. Yes, and that helps him to keep uh, cough with Kareem going. Anyways, I think uh, um, I just wish we we look more... We stop seeing us as uh, competitors and see ourselves more like partners. I'm sorry if I, my points are, are, you know, different, but the beauty of life is that we are all different. I didn't mean to offend anybody. I have my choices and my thinking, and I, I hope is aligned with most of us. 
my lovely wife, companion. Thank you so much for joining me on the Coffee with Cream podcast. I hope to have you on again for more episodes. I've been asking you to do this for quite some time, but you are a very busy, successful woman. Thank you, honey. It was great to, you know, just share our normal conversations in our daily, our daily life with uh, everybody else. It's like, it's nice to... This is how we talk? Yeah, this is how we talk. This is our life. This is Karim and I have conversation. Hope you guys enjoy it. Have a lovely day, everybody. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.